Alrighty guys, we're back for Red Deck Wins, and this is a Murders at Karlov Manor Standard Brew, and I'm Red Cat. Let's go over the deck, then hop right into some ranked, rocking some new cards. We got Connecting the Dots as a three of in here. It's a two mana enchantment. Whenever a creature you control attacks, exile the top card of your library face down. It has a note here, you can't look at it. Okay, now... For one and a red, you discard your hand, sacrifice connecting the dots, put all cards exiled with connecting the dots into their owner's hands. Oh my goodness. So if you're swinging with a lot of creatures every turn anyways, I, I don't think it would be unheard of to go ahead and replenish your hand with like eight cards off of connecting the dots, right? Now, hopefully we don't end up milling ourselves out if we get a couple of these onto the board too, which uh, I don't think that would happen. But honestly, dude, you never know, especially if you're swinging wide enough. So yeah, the main build around was technically connecting the dots, but just having so many creatures packed in here that we're swinging in with every turn uh, really benefits cards like Godric, where of course we want to hit that celebration cost to make this a 4-4, swinging in the air. All four of them, even though it's a legendary creature, it's going to really go a long way. Godric always pushes that damage through, so... We have other really cool cards that might work really well with the Godric, like a new one-drop Frantic Scapegoat. This is a 1-mana one 1-1 one, one with haste, and when it ETVs, you suspect it. And when you suspect a creature, it has menace, and it can't block as well. So what's cool about Scapegoat is the bottom ability, though. Whenever one or more other creatures enter the battlefield under your control, if Frantic Scapegoat is suspected, you may suspect one of the other creatures. And if you do, Frantic Scapegoat is no longer suspected. So what ends up happening, then, is you could totally suspect, like, Monastery Swiss Spear which sounds pretty devastating for the opponent, man, because menacing on a Swiss Spear just, yeah, sounds menacing, doesn't it? It's like, how often do you block with Swiss Spear anyways? I, I would say not very often. <laughs> and then, yeah, dropping, like, Suspect onto Godric. Same concept, dude. Getting that through. Maybe you didn't hit the Celebration, but now it has Menace anyways. Or maybe they have a Jump Blocker in the air, but now it's flying in the air and it has Menace anyways. I don't know. Sounds pretty cool. I actually think the scapegoat is going to go a really long way. Uh, now we have a whole bunch of one mana cards in here that I don't think I have to go over, but I, I will obviously say what's in here. We have four Commando Faces Kakazan. We have four of the Monastery Swiss Spear that I brought up. We have four Monstrous Rage. Yep. Four Phoenix Trick. Four Play With Fires. Yeah, all that's very, very basic red deck wins nonsense. Now we do have three lightning strikes in here just for more burn. It's going to go a long way, I would say. Uh, in a build like this where we're like hopefully restocking our hand well enough, do we just want even more one drops? Maybe, maybe. I don't know. Three damage goes a long way. Like shock just got reprinted. Do we want to potentially like drop two lightning strikes for a couple more shocks? Probably not. But, you know, I'm bringing it up right now for a reason. We have more new cards with Fugitive Codebreaker as well. Two mana, two one, prowess, haste. Yep, that's pretty much all it needed to have for me to add it to the list, but it also has Disguise for 5 and a red, and the cost is reduced by 1 for each instant and sorcery card in your graveyard, so potentially getting this pretty cheap. And when it has that Disguise, you can cast it face down for 3 mana as a 2-2 two -two creature with Ward 2, and you can turn it face up anytime for its Disguise cost. So when you read it like that, yeah, that Disguise cost is pretty expensive, but yeah, like I said, hopefully you can get it relatively cheap overall. Uh, but when Fugitive Codebreaker is turned face up, you discard your hand, then draw three cards. Now, that doesn't say, like, you may, so be prepared to discard your hand no matter what. But in a deck like this, with all these one-mana cards, hopefully our hand is relatively empty already. And then I don't know how often you're actually going to be playing this out for three mana anyways. Like, you'd have to be in the mid-game already, and at that point, you're still just trying to plug damage through, so realistically you're still just looking at this as a two mana two one prowess haste which is pretty good dude okay we also have a squee packed in more ways to pop off with godric more creatures to go wide with to have the connecting dots just exile more off the top all that sounds really really good a couple witch stalker frenzy and since we're trying to attack in with as many creatures every turn anyways witch stalker frenzy is hopefully going to be about two mana or less uh now it isn't unheard of to have it at three mana and still be really good. Just five damage, taking out Shieldred, not bad at all. I think the two of is definitely going to be worth it. 18 Mountains, one of them being Crucible of Defiance, which also works really well with the Godric if it comes time to use this as a utility piece because Godric's also um, 
legendary as well so that makes the crucible of defiance just a little bit cheaper hey maybe we actually want two crucible of defiance i guess it really depends how much the uh 19 land ends up flooding us for some reason you never know with all these one drops man okay some honorable mentions over here thought about charming scoundrel of course very powerful creature Beldon, yep very powerful creature. I actually thought about some Mishra's Foundries in the mana base. I guess this is your personal preference. If you go up a couple Mishra's Foundries, there are going to be plenty of games where you want to do two to three red things on the same turn, but Mishra's Foundry just doesn't let you. And then there's going to be other games where the opponent drops a Sunfall, and then the your last hope is the Mishra's Foundry. <laughs> so it really depends. Your personal preference, though, I'm just opting for all the red sources. Okay, guys, I think that's everything. Let's go ahead, take it into some ranked, and see how we do. Okay, we'll see if we can get right into that first game. Let's go. What you bring to the table, opponent? What am I expecting from the build? I am expecting it to be good, so I will be heartbroken if it is not good <laughs> i just you know gotta be real with you guys i'm expecting a lot here so we'll see we'll see yeah godric style mono red is absolutely devastating as the opponent has just showcased um well <laughs> it is what it is you know what we went first we we're probably going to win anyway <laughs> no 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 uh that well yeah that happens every now and then you'll drop the swift spear <laughs> <laughs> oh man now it is a little bit of a different version of mono red opponent so like you know uh give us a break <laughs> well hopefully we can get right into the next match then uh like like i said i'm expecting a little bit i think that hand was perfectly capable with 19 land i think we were gonna find our third in time hopefully but even if we didn't i think the two mana was gonna be totally fine and if we just like top decked a bunch of one drops for like four turns in a row i think yeah i think it was going to be completely okay opponent goes first this time i think this is keepable it's the same concept dude even if we don't see the third for a few turns if we just top deck a bunch of one drops it's totally totally fine uh they accept that trade easy peasy so i'm gonna actually just hold swift spear back until we get connecting the dots on the board that, that's a terrific trade for them uh, Swiss Spear has way more value than Officer. Ah, uh, second Officer. Crap. Ooh, okay. Yeah, they got a terrific double block here now, too. <laughs> okay, well, at that point, I was going to go connecting the dots, but now just, like, having play with fire is much better. So, um, unfortunately, holding back, connecting the dots for now. Second Swiss Spear was a really good draw. We go for the swing. We see where they block. We go play with fire. Oh. Well, crap. Um, we should probably still take one of these out, right? Probably. Probably Warden? Is that right? I don't know. I, I don't know which one we want to target. Because Officer is really good at blocking these Swiss Spears as we just showed. But at least it trades well. And Warden has that ability too where they could easily get to that point where they can start buffing that above the range. Hey, return triumphant. Dude, nice opponent. Okay, well, they can attempt to start to outpace us here. One, two, which stalker frenzy down to two. Um, It's just Godric for the turn. Do we still like full swing? Connecting the dots, like not getting witch stalker frenzy down. Maybe it is connecting the dots actually. Maybe we start getting the exile. See, like, the prowess goes off. We still have a decent swing. Hopefully we don't, like, die next turn for some reason. See, we're not allowed looking at these. <laughs> okay, opponent goes down to 12. Yeah, I can't imagine what would actually kill us this turn, but you never know sometimes. Have faith in my sword. And triumphant. They got the Archangel Elspeth. Yeah, I was expecting soldiers. I, I don't know what we're up against. It's cool, though. Maybe it's like a Warden of the Inner Sky build, since this lets them generate um, soldiers every turn. Oh, give it some... Give it some flying. Yeah. They even... 
Okay, I was going to say they even hold back here, which would be actually really good for them to hold back. Fugitive Codebreaker. We play that. We full swing. Witch Stalker Frenzy, the Warden. We make sure one of the Swiss Spears hits the Elspeth, right? So, Codebreaker. What a draw, dude. Holy cow, that's disgusting. So, Swiss Spear, you, you to face. I still don't think we end up dying. But you never know. Witch Stalker Frenzy. Prowess, prowess, prowess. Five to face. All right. Nice. And we're getting these new cards down too. GG opponent. Oh, man. See, like we could easily restock our hand. Like five cards, dude. We bear it like that was just two turns. Five cards underneath the connecting the dots. Like I know we have to discard our hand, but imagine. Imagine we saw a land off the top, right? We play the land, we go lightning strike the opponent's face, and then we have the connecting the dots available for when it comes time to just restock our hand for the turn after too. Just like drawing five, just like putting five cards into your hand. <laughs> Could you imagine, dude? Holy cow, we gotta we actually gotta get a game. Where, oh, Rune, dude, nice. I think I already had four of those though, and I think that's what the gems were there, like the 20 gems on the side. Anyways, we gotta get like an actual game where connecting the dots actually replenishes our hand, because that could have been the game, but uh, the opponent ended up leaving. Okay, the opponent goes first. This is not ideal with double connecting the dots and not a lot of other creatures, a lot of land for the opener too. All right, it was a great game. I say we keep this, push the deck to its limits, see what happens. We have a lot of things, like just terrific things we could uh, swing or draw into as well. Okay, the scapegoat is now suspected. <laughs> it's really funny. Ooh, theologist. Titan of industry over there. Godric, that's good. Really good. Um, so Menace gets around it. I'm going to set up for the turn with connecting the dots. You want to play it before combat because, of course, it affects the combat <laughs> when we get the exile. Godric is so good for next turn because we get to put that suspect onto it, give it Menace, and get around this archaeologist. Squirming Emergence. Wow. Well, I mean, they do have the double block now. But, I mean, is that still what we end up doing? Probably. That's still, that's still pretty good, isn't it? Menace onto it. Do we need the menace onto it? We can't, like, really successfully swing with Scapegoat unless we do a combat trick here. Setting up with Godric might mean we just run right into... No, yeah, we do it. We do it. How, how do you guys feel about that? And give it that menace. If we swing, they block here, and maybe they take the Godric, and then we... Actually, I do like the full swing. So we go connecting the dots for two more cards. Because now if they see they're forced to double block because of the menace. And if that was the, the line that they were choosing, they would want to go the 1-3 into the scapegoat to make sure they take care of that. We'll take care of the prankster then. We'll see if they end up getting another creature down to make sure they get that menace, but... Now we should be able to get that Godric into the air anyways. Yeah, I'll tell you what, dude. This connecting the dots. I'll tell you what. All right, so. Mountain. We could play the second connecting the dots. Totally could. I'm going to. Like I said, hopefully, uh, when I was going over the deck, hopefully don't end up, like, <laughs> milling ourselves out with them. Because this is four cards off the top here. It's five cards under this one. Let's see. Um, let's get the Godric into the air. Maximize damage, right? And then I guess if they block Scapegoat, we go Monstrous Rage onto Scapegoat. I think that's fine. Nothing for the... Uh, oh, GG opponent. <laughs> There's going to be 8 damage coming through down to 9. And nothing from them for the 4... 
four mana open, two white sources, no wandering emperor. Also, guys, the menace was getting through anyways. I should have been a little bit more patient with the monstrous rage just in case. Um, so we should have full swung and then just waited, seen what happened, because it still could have been like a wandering emperor. Yeah, so let's not forget the menace was getting by anyways. Like, how? Are, like, seriously, how would the opponent stop this, man? I mean, yeah, like a Wandering Emperor on the Godric, that would have been huge for them. But now that we have, like, no cards in hand and four mountains on the board, we would just, like, play with Fire Their Face next turn and then just connecting the dots number one and get five cards back or more if we had more to swing with on the board at that point, too. Five cards in mono red. That, that was what? That was two games in a row where our connecting the dots had just five cards chilling under it. Yeah, dude. I don't know, man. Connecting the dots. I know it takes like a little bit of setup, but the setup hasn't been bad. And since it like triggers the prowess anyways, on, uh, on eight of our creatures have prowess. Ooh, opponent goes first. This is a slow hand, but we keep it. Give it a shot. Let's do it. Again, pushing the limits of the build. Swamp. Okay. Nothing. Nothing from us. No one drop off the top. Swamp. <laughs> oh, Icor Drinker. Cool. I don't get to see that one too often. It blocks the Code Breaker really well, unfortunately. So we're just going to like awkwardly play Code Breaker number one and see if Cut Down hits it. It sure feels like a cut down, let me tell you what. Oh, it sure is. So, Godric gets around cut down, obviously, but they might just keep open mana for a go for the throat instead. The 21, open mana from the opponent. Um, If we go Codebreaker, Monstrous Rage is really good. Codebreaker face down, like the ward isn't bad. Does Godric die right away is the question. We got four Godrics in here anyways. Like, Codebreaker with Monstrous Rage could be good, but it still gets picked up by a go for the throat since they have all this open mana. Like, a Braid, Lightning Strike, any literally anything hits all of our creatures. The go for the throat, so it would have been the same concept uh, on the Codebreaker, but, like, we would have lost our Monstrous Rage too. Okay, no shielded for the turn. That could be good for us, I guess. Attempt the code breaker. Well, at what point do I just want to try the ward out for size? Crucible. All right, I think it's finally time to try out. Like, we were slowed down significantly here. It's already our turn four, and the opponent's chilling at 22. <laughs> uh, we were slowed down significantly. It was a slow hand already, but uh, Monstrous Rage open. That doesn't give haste or anything fancy. But, like, if they go cut down and pay the ward, then we go Monstrous Rage to protect it, and I think that's totally worthwhile. How do you guys feel about that? If it's go for the throat... And then they pay the ward. They pay all four to take down our face down card. Now it keeps that trample around. Oh, corpses of the lost. Okay, so this is might be a skeleton build then. We can't flip that yet. So we go Swiss Spear. Mm -hmm. Which Stalker Frenzy can get down to two here, but that's not what we want to do. Before combat, I suppose we hit the skeleton. And then we full swing. And then I'm going to count how many instants and sorceries are in the grave. Oh, it could still be like a third cut down too. Okay, they go for just a normal block. Okay, because double cut down go for the throat. I'm going to keep the crucible as utility. Okay, so we have one, two. So Codebreaker is four to flip. That's pretty expensive. This would have been a great game to have connecting the dots on the board to actually like showcase when replenishing matters. Because right now, 
is when replenishing matters when we're when we're slowed down this significantly beseech the mirror okay what did they want to bargain here just like she holdred but like witch stalker frenzy's rough oh each player sacrifices two creatures and discards two cards opponent holy cow that couldn't have been any more brutal rankles prank dude that got rid of everything we owned oh my goodness okay well we have the play with fire to their face luckily get that scry at, at the very least dude how brutal was that yeah i was thinking i was thinking we were gonna flip oh what do i even want guys i don't even know what i want on top something better than scapegoat what if we hit a mountain though i guess if we hit dude i don't know but i think we want something better than scapegoat godric okay there we go come on godric let's get some damage through buddy i think they probably even trump with the incubator um yeah we were about to restock our hand with the code breaker flip that that was really rough man i i shouldn't say about to i'm not sure when i was planning to do that but they go incubator they didn't want to chump just yet i guess so corpse explosion in here as well oh man <laughs> yeah what do we what do we need off the top they go for the swing um maybe it's like i don't i don't know Ooh, mountain we honestly probably still i mean first of all we play the mountain this is very much like a luliana style deck too isn't it like rankles prank could have us discard and sacrifice too so just getting the mountains down totally fine yeah this is this is a game where connecting the dots really could have done something an early one something chilling in the opponent's hand huh swing for three okay down to 12 maybe nothing chilling in the opponent's hand Bannon Meyer. What do they end up hitting here? Oh, nice. Nice hit. And they got a Cult Conscript, too. So, Blood Tithe Harvester. Yeah, not a bad hit for them at all. They can go ahead and bring back the Cult uh, Conscript. Activate only if a non-skeleton creature died under your control this turn. Uh, what? What ended up dying for them? Deep goat. And they have this one too. So this trades really nicely. Um, so maybe we keep scapegoat in hand. Maybe we see another permanent off the top and we can get Godric in the air. Probably not though. Because we have to anticipate just the fact that they're also trying to outpace us. I'm not 100% certain if that is correct to just get scapegoat in down to get the menace through but it kind of feels kind of feels okay there wait a minute this cult conscript was from their hand maybe and then this was the one so they they played this for one mana maybe and then this was the one in the grave right yeah that's probably that's probably what ended up happening there go for the swing I mean, I'll attempt the block. I don't know what could be in their hand. Oh, Blood Tithe Harvester. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what they want. So I guess we'll take the four. Because they could go Blood Tithe Harvester, hit the Godric, and then bring the other uh, Cult Conscript back from the grave tapped. This is going to be a tough uphill battle, dude. That Rankles prank was something else. Monstrous Rage. So it was actually going to be another thing that gave us a permanent so maybe no this is actually a good swing because if they block with harvester monstrous rage helps the godric trample through and survive so that point might come down to what's in hand they might want to trade out with the blood token all right let's see what they end up doing i suppose it's anyone's game after that wild prank 
I figured it was heavily leaning towards the opponent, but it looks like they're starting to fizzle out just a little bit. They are going to use Blood Token. They might find something here. They very well might. They do. They find a go for the throat. <gasps> oh, no. Guys, how brutal is that? Down to three. Threatening lethal. Mountain off the top, dude. Hey, good game opponent. That was a wild time. Really cool Rakdos build from the opponent, too. Not not your typical Rakdos that we've been seeing, which has been uh, Rakdos control. Overwhelmingly Rakdos control when we see Rakdos. So. All right, guys. Hey, 25 minutes in, making great time. We can totally like squeeze two to three more matches in. Let's do this. But yeah, early connect the dots in that game. I bet that would have leaned it towards us. And that go for the throw off the top there, actually... Actually, that Godric sticking on the board with that trample, that would have leaned it towards us too. So we just needed them to not see anything off of that uh, blood token. Do we try this? Opponent goes first. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Okay, let's try it. Let's do it. <laughs> I think normally this would be a mulligan. I think. But I also think that the deck is more than capable of drawing well. All right. A mountain. Yeah. That's good. Scapegoat. Go, 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 go. Mr. Scapegoat. Run. Woo. No cut down. Beautiful. We go Swiss Spear. Suspect it. Commando. Swing. Right? Oh, no. Get out of my hand, Deep Cavern. Ba oh, it actually has to hit, like, play with fire anyways if they don't want us to get back whatever. Um, actually taking Squee there. Huh. Cool. All right. Mountain. Uh, like they might trade. Probably not. So, Swiss Spear. Suspect it. We, I think we stay on track here, right? So, submit the Swiss Spear. Commando. Over the burn. Just like getting Commando down. Oh, thank you, opponent. Why, thank you, buddy. I don't think they trade with Scapegoat, but they might. I think they want to keep that lifelink. They want to swing with it. I don't think they even plan on trading a block next turn, right? If they can just swing with it every turn and maybe get some burn off of their face. Oh, yeah, dude, check this out. Back up one onto the deep cavern back. Gain two back up to 17. Cool stuff. But at that point, now we're going to be forced to burn the deep cavern bat. Connecting the dots. What's up, dude? All right. Looks like Kamano's second phase is doing nothing for the turn. That's fine. They have a great... Uh, no, yeah, Menace on the Swiss Spear. Dude, wow. All right. Connecting the dots. Oh, no. Go for the throat, guys. Oh, jeez. All right. Well, we'll still go for the swing. And actually, they want to remove this before we swing, too. They do want to remove one of our creatures before we swing. Maybe they don't have removal. Because that's two cards under connecting the dots now. See if they block the scapegoat. Probably not. And then maximize the amount of damage by going play with fire onto deep cavern and get that squee back for next turn, which will put even more cards under the connecting the dots. Okay, sacrifice a creature, draw a card. Nice. So that's what was being held open, huh? Squee back to our hand. Three getting through. Commando flips next turn. Uh, squee did I say Squee getting Squee coming back to our hand is what my brain was trying to process there. <laughs> um, looks like okay, they called Human on Cavern of Souls. Um, Insidious Roots. Feature tokens you control have tap add one man of any color. Also a Dread Knight for the draw. Godric, oh my. God. Goodness, bro. Well, it's Godric for the turn, isn't it? Jeez, man. What a draw. Four under connecting the dots. Squee and Lightning Strike still being super threatening in our hand, though. Down to five. Uh, opponent needs something terrific here. A little bit of life gain. Remove some of these creatures somehow. So, like, the, um, the adventure that goes minus three, minus three. Hit Godric. Gain a couple, right? 
and then do that again on the Swiss Spear, probably. And then they would gain a couple. All that would be really good for them. Dude, I hope I actually get to activate connecting the dots one of these times. Like right now? Oh, Insidious Roots. Whenever one or more creature cards leave your graveyard, you create a 0-1. Green, well, the, the problem is Godric just flies in the air, though. Uh, Mosswood Dread Knight does not work with the Insidious Roots uh, because it was exiled, not the graveyard. They are they are checking, they are double checking the Insidious Roots. GG opponent, really neat idea, but uh, I think I think they were thinking that the Mosswood Dread Knight was in the grave. So hold up, let me let me double check uh, Insidious Roots. So whenever one of our creature cards leave your graveyard, uh, create a 0-1 green plant creature token, then put a plus one plus one counter on each plant you control. Mosswood Dread Knight, whenever you do the sorcery side of things, uh, Adventure says you may cast this card as an adventure after you do exile it, so it's not in the grave. Uh, still, really neat concept. It's always great to see uh, people brewing with the new cards, checking it out, right? See, <laughs> seeing what works and seeing what doesn't. Unfortunately, that meant that they dropped the concede, which means we didn't get connect the dots to pop off. <laughs> Six cards under the connect the dots. Dude, I'll tell you what, man. If at any point they drop Sunfall, if at any point they drop any board wipe, and we just have that connect the dots ready to go, that just seems so good to me. But we're not, we're not really getting to see it today. All right, here's a good old fashioned generic mono red hand should be completely fine. I want to play around a cut down, so we're going to start with Kimano. And hopefully that's enough to get the Swiss Spear above the cut down with the Play With Fire open. That does not get it around a go for the throat, however. Either way, we're going to attempt it. We're going to attempt the swing. We're going to attempt maximum amount of damage and scry a land on top, hopefully. It is going to be a Shieldred's Edict. Okay. Attempted the maximum amount of damage. It did not end up working out for us. So Commando flips next turn. So play with fire is not terrible to keep on top, but I am going to send it. Hopefully that's not a mistake. Searching for our third mana to uh, potentially get Godric in the air. Commando. Okay. Not terrible, but I think we end up just keeping a Lightning Strike open. Well, probably not, actually. Yeah, never mind. We need these commandos to flip, like, as soon as possible all the time. It definitely sucks that we don't have any open one mana card, but it's still probably worthwhile to get that to flip ASAP. Deep Root Wayfinder blocks really well. Oh no, Godric number three, guys. That's really bad. All right, we're going to pick up the Wayfinder to attempt to swing with Etching. And it still could be like a go for the throw or a second uh, Shieldred's Edict or something. We're in desperate need of a land off the top. The third Godric is really, really bad. Okay, play with fire. I think it says a lot about the power that Mono Red is in right now. When we're drawing so poorly, but we're still putting on so much pressure. Like, holy cow, man. The fact that we're doing so bad, but the opponent's about to go down to eight is wild to me. So we want to keep the play with fire for their turn. Blast zone. Oh, crap, dude. All right, let's see if we can scry that land to the top finally. Land, let's go. Now, Godric might die two turns in a row, but the third Godric, huh? But the third Godric, that's the one. That's the one that'll survive. <laughs> So, like, tear us under max power onto Godric. That's my prediction for the turn. Last zone. Etching. Godric's alive. For some reason. Well, that's actually worse for us because we have... Yeah, GG opponent. Ah, jeez, man. Like I said, it showcases the power level of Mono Red that we just drew. So bad. <laughs> it looks like they were missing some stuff, though. It looks like they, they were missing some uh, creature presence. Maybe like Shieldred would have really come in handy for them too, right? So 34 minutes in. Let's go one more, guys. Uh, I'd like to end on high notes, so we could have ended it there. But like, 
I really do believe we can still end on a high note uh, in one more game. And even if we end up losing, I think the deck performed well enough today, right? I think so. I, I'm not really sure. When the, uh, when the new set comes out, I wait for the deck tracker to update. And I don't know if it actually got the update yet, so... Yeah, today would have been one of those days where the deck tracker would have really come in handy. All right, scapegoat. Go, 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 go. They went first, and this looks like a uh, terrifying matchup. If it's just Orzov, bro. Orzov's rough. Orzov has a lot of removal, a lot of life gain, a lot of planeswalker value. Go for Mirex for the turn. Okay, I guess scapegoat. There's not a lot of options here. And the question is, do we actually want to go wide for when it comes time? Do we actually go shield or G-Dict? I'm not going to suspect the Phoenix check. I'm going to decline. Because I think that Orzov is one of those things that gets creatures on the ground. And so having Menace on the ground is not terrible. But also giving menace to like Squee could be really good too, so. Lord Skitter. There's the blocker on the ground. Luckily, this rat 1-1 one -one can't block. Holy cow, Godric. Dude, that's really good. Is it Squee for the turn though? Squee swing. Squee full swing. They block like scapegoat. Let one get through. We're going wide. Then Godric comes down. Squee might get picked up by removal. I think Godric as a surprise is a little better than the Squee as a surprise. And Squee with Menace is a little better than Godric with Menace. And we still go full swing because they can only block one of the 1-1s. One and we still want to maximize the amount of damage going to the opponent's face here. Yeah, Godric's a great draw because... If we are able to still swing with three creatures, like if they only remove Squee, for example, then Witchstalker Frenzy goes down to one, so maybe we pick up like... Oh no, they pass it back with four open. Well, <laughs> I wonder if we can guess what's in the opponent's hand. Well, at that point, Codebreaker is a great draw. Witchstalker Frenzy, get rid of their blocker. They exile Squee for sure with the Wandering Emperor. Like, for sure, 100, 110% over the code breaker. And so we keep the cloaked reveler, our Godric, back. I'm sorry, Pony. I am thinking, buddy. This is actually important, too. Like, really important. Because we have to know what we're running into the Wandering Emperor. And if it's Godric, they exile Godric. So, Godric as a surprise, right? Code breaker. We're trying to maximize damage, so we go for the haste side of things. Yeah, dude, it's got to be. Okay, here we go. We'll swing. Witch Stalker Frenzy. Get rid of their blocker. They exile the Squee. And then hopefully they don't have like a second Wandering Emperor for the Godric. Because the life gain on the Wandering Emperor is one of the, one of the worst parts about it. For sure. The exile too, of course, but... Huh? It's not a wandering emperor. Dude, I was playing against a ghost. Look at this. They get a couple blockers down. Dude, our Godric would have been huge. Well, they need to double block that though. They do go for the double block. Which means we're getting a bunch of extra damage through. But now the question is, is Godric going to be able to get into the air? <laughs> Dude, I was playing against a ghost. I... Uh, 110% like no matter what this was going to be a wandering emperor. I mean it was probably still worth playing around it though, right guys? <laughs> I think so. And green evangelist. Wow. Okay. They can't block anyways. They're like let's poke a couple through. Oh, monstrous rage. Oh man. Well hey, sometimes sometimes the game is just like that, dude. I guess we just end up seeing where they block because they could block in the air anyways and the monstrous rage like depending on where they block like we might want to put it on the code breaker for example they go double onto godric um 
and one onto the code breaker. So we go one onto Godric to save its life because it goes into the air then. I have extra going through because of the trample. GG, minus one opponent, man. I'm so sorry. Like, Mono Red just knows how to draw sometimes, dude. You know what I mean? Oh, <laughs> uh, man. Yeah, if we didn't, like, literally, if we didn't see Monstrous Rage there, uh, like, the trample wasn't going through. The opponent would have had one more turn, essentially, and then it depends what we ended up drawing. Like, I guess maybe, well, Godric in the air was essential. I was going to say, like, maybe, like, play with fire, take care of the bat, but then Godric wasn't getting into the air that turn then without that. Uh, without the monstrous rage right wait right we didn't have any other way uh, yeah yeah because the only two things that entered was uh godric and since squee was in the grave there that's really funny that i played around that wandering emperor and we didn't even have to mm, they doubled down on the virtue adventure side which was actually really good for them huh Go ahead and crack this pack real quick. It's a new pack. Let's see what we get, man. Hedge maze. Let's go. Land. <laughs> I really wish the land would be uncommons. I can't be alone on that, dude. Having these essential pieces of the meta be rare is just like, ah. It's not cool, man. Yeah, now having them as uncommon so people can play whatever the heck style of deck they want to play like you know it just always makes monocolored decks the most budget friendly unfortunately but hey i'm not complaining i love monocolored decks so all right 19 mountains seemed fine it sure felt like we had a lot every now and then but it always came in handy right for the most part like sometimes i guess we would uh i guess we'd see like five and that was too much dude connecting the dots it felt like it was doing a thing, but it actually didn't do anything today. Well, that, that's not true. It did buff our prowess creatures a few times. So that's something. The problem is, like, there's just so much power packed in. Like, when's connecting the dots actually going to help? And then, like, in the matches where it could help, are you actually going to see it? We saw that today, too, right? Like, the games where, oh, yeah, connecting the dots on the board, maybe we would have gotten there. Uh, but, of course, only a three of, so you're not always going to see it. And you don't want to go up to four because then you'll see too much of it and you're not seeing enough of the other aggressive uh, aggressive stuff, right? Speaking of aggressive stuff, Fugitive Codebreaker. Hi. Hi there, buddy. I like this one, man. Two mana, two one, prowess haste. It's one more mana or one more power over Swiss Spear. Now Swiss Spear has the two um has the two toughness, of course. But there's just something about Fugitive Codebreaker. Having that option on there to potentially play it as a three mana card and eventually flip it potentially for cheap too and restock your hand as well. I really like this, dude. I really like Codebreaker. Uh, I, th I mean, I think this is already the third list that I have Codebreaker in since the set came out. So he seems to perform well so far. What do you guys think? Is this a powerhouse of a card? Let me know in the comments for sure. Frantic Scapegoat, the Menace, dude. Menace, like the Menace going on to the Squee. That was really cool. Menace going on to anything. Frantic Scapegoat, yeah. I really liked the new cards in here. I'm super interested to see. Now, guys, let me know if you do end up having the Connect the Dots and you end up trying out this version of Mono Red. Let me know, does the Connecting the Dots do anything? Now, if you don't have connecting the dots, I think, like, maybe you only have one of these, right? You could totally just run the one and then have a couple Ren's Resolves in here instead. And it would essentially do or be a similar concept. The Ren's Resolve is still going to give you some extra cards to play next turn and is still going to activate your prowess creatures anyways. So, you know, it is a rare so if you don't have any of these, same thing, dude. If you want to just trade these out for three Ren's Resolves, I suppose it would probably do the same thing. Now, as far as like Mono Red goes, you really can't go wrong. <laughs> like you can probably trade out whatever the heck you want to trade out and still be relatively okay as long as you have the uh, fundamentals of the Red Deck wins, right? Which is like Swiss Spear, Play With Fire, Kamano. Uh, and at that point, uh, Monstrous Rage, I suppose too, is... Uh, big heavy hitting card in a deck like this and 
paired with Swiss beer, of course, we know the power level of that. But then having that code breaker, yeah, that's unfortunate too. Code breaker being a rare as well. Is the code breaker worth the craft? I'll say this right now. It was worth the craft for me, for sure. It's just as like a red player in general who likes to brew. I think code breaker is going to make a lot of lists. Like I said, three lists already since the set came out. So for me, this was definitely worth the craft. For everyone else, if you don't have it, I guess you don't really need it. <laughs> and going up like a different prowess creature probably won't be worth it because I don't think there's any other two mana prowess that has haste because the haste on there is that keyword that pairs with that prowess that makes the code breaker worth playing alongside the Swiss spear, right? Same thing with the Swiss spear, right? The haste on this, that's what makes it important. So yeah, what, 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 I mean, what would we trade out code breaker for? I guess just like, some of the honorable mentions, right? Like Feldon and stuff like that. Maybe you cracked a couple code breakers in your packs, and then yeah, definitely go up a couple code breakers and then trade out for like the, the Feldons that you might have already had too. Or like a fourth lightning strike. That's not gonna hurt anything at all, probably, right? I think most mono red lists play four lightning strikes anyways. It just so happens I was trying to just fit as much as possible in here that uh could swing in for the connect the dots, and of course could buff the Godric into the air too, so. Okay, guys, this is the fourth video I'm recording today, so I am losing my voice. <laughs> uh, great way to end out the recording evening for sure. I feel like the deck was pretty powerful. I have to go back and see how many matches we actually played and how many of those we actually won as well. Either way, if you made it this far into the video, you all are champions for real. Make sure you check out that description where we have that Discord link, a great place for the community just to, uh, you know, be together, talk about magic, uh, drop deck lists, drop deck suggestions, all that fun stuff. And then also in the uh, description, we have the Patreon link too. If you're ever interested in supporting the channel that way, the Patreon really does go that extra mile for me as a creator. And then also, it's a great way to guarantee that your suggestions get played on the channel as well. Okay, guys. This was a lot of fun, wasn't it? <laughs> Enough rambling, though. I will see y'all in the next video.